Hey there, like I said in the previous video, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, so all the points I'm about to describe come from my own personal experience. Don't do anything without consulting a professional. I'm not responsible for your health and well-being, so proceed with caution. I'm not affiliated with anybody from the list, nor do I have any benefit or gain whatsoever. I'm sharing links without any tracking or referral codes. OK, now that we've got that out of the way, let me tell you how I managed to improve or at least maintain my mental and physical performance. The list is in a random order and the prices are what I paid in Bucharest, Romania. 1. A great chair and good posture. I'm a big fan of the Ergo Human Chair. I have both versions and I ended up using them after doing loads of research. The conclusion I came up with was this. Cheap and medium cost chairs are rubbish and they wear out fast. So I looked for higher quality chairs and Ergo Human was near the top of the list. They cost around $700 and if I had to choose between the two versions, I'd go with the second one because it's a bit comfier and it's made for smaller people. I've been using the first chair at home for about five years and it's in excellent condition. I recently purchased the version 2 for my office. It's a big investment, but it's well worth the money. Some useful points, no matter the chair. A. Keep your head rested on the chair's head support. This will help you prevent your neck from sticking out. B. Keep your toes in front of your knees, flat on the floor. If you can't do that, purchase a $30 IKEA footrest. C. Keep most of your forearm on the table, but make sure you're far enough from your screen. My chair has adjustable soft handles, so I rest my forearms on them considering my desk is fairly shallow. D. Don't stand completely upright. From my research, I found it's actually better to lean back a little. Controversial, yes, but that's what I found. This alone has dramatically improved my ability to work, but also relieved some of the strain on my body. 2. Getting a massage. I was under the impression that getting a massage is a lot of money, but I struck a deal with a recovery clinic and they charged me about $25 per hour at my house, tips included. Initially, it was about $40, but since I was using their service about two or three times per week, I managed to negotiate a far better price. It's been three years and I haven't regretted a penny. I did buy a massage chair thinking it's better than regular massage, but I returned it because even the higher end ones aren't comparable to an actual person. Again, it's a sum and an apparent luxury that not a lot of people could afford, but it makes a big difference. I had no idea the amount of tension and back pain I was gathering up as I was stacking up the hours. I can't tell you how much I suggest you get a massage as often as you can. It's not a luxury, it's an investment in your health and well-being. Usually, it's not going to be relaxing, quite the opposite, but your upper back and neck muscles will immensely appreciate it. So get a massage today. Three taking supplements. Self-medicating isn't a smart idea, but I've done my research and I believe I know the risks. This is what I'm currently taking from time to time, depending on my needs. Ocu support. I take it when I'm about to spend long hours reading or focusing on an important project. I've been to an eye specialist and my eye health is in great shape, no glasses needed so far. I take it daily. Lecithin, Ginkgo biloba, Spiruline. These help me focus and I believe they make me sharper. I find it easier to enter my trance-like work state when I'm taking them. They don't make a night and day difference, but they help support brain function. I take varying doses around three times per week. Vitamin D3, 5,000 units. I take this once every three to four days, especially in the wintertime. It's extremely cheap and I found several documentaries that point to its huge benefits. This is really helpful for people who don't get enough direct sunlight on their skin. Working all day every day inside your house or office will place you in that category. ZMA. This helps me sleep better and I take it when I'm very sexually active as that drops zinc levels. I understand it also helps muscle recovery and boosts testosterone, but I can only vouch for my quality of sleep. Multivitamin and Omega-3s. I've stopped taking them as often, but they're still part of my stack. Creatine and beta-alanine for muscle recovery after working out. I take low doses after intense workouts, maybe twice per week. Know that beta-alanine will make your skin tingle and it's a very strange sensation. And that's about it regarding supplements. Some other points, I've never used Adderall or similar substances. I'm not taking it to that extreme. I have tried other supplements like melatonin, for example, which also helps you sleep better. 
but after doing more research, I found the negatives outweigh the positives. I'm also not a fan of supplements that have it all, 20 different compounds into one pill. I'd much rather buy each item separately and know exactly what I'm putting into my body. I don't take amino acids, protein shakes, pre-workouts or any other so-called muscle building supplements. I'm a fan of iHerb.com, which is one of the biggest supplement stores. When choosing brands, I prefer Now Foods. I also found it's much better you buy powders rather than pills. That's not always a choice, but when you get that option, go for the powder as you get a lot more servings for just about the same price. The downside is the taste, which is usually horrible, but that's a small price to pay. 4. Running and working out I'm a big fan of doing cardio of any kind, especially running on the treadmill or using the elliptical machine. Is it better to run outside? Sure, but the gym is a much more controlled space where the weather isn't a factor. Personally, I recommend you do sprint intervals. Sprinting makes me feel alive and it's a better workout than moderately walking or running. This is paramount to my well-being. It not only keeps my body in shape, but also my mind. I often crave to be active and this is a necessity, not an optional bit. Of course, you have to invest in good running shoes. I paid $125 for the pair I've been rocking for the last four years. I've run without them, and it was a nightmare. Pains and aches everywhere. I never realised how important they were until I forgot to put them in my backpack. Working out with weights is another factor that keeps you in good shape. Know that if you push yourself too hard, you'll drain your energy level, and in turn, that will negatively impact your designing. That was a trade I personally was willing to make. If you want to learn more about working out, I highly suggest you subscribe to Jeff Cavalier on YouTube, who goes by the name Athelian X. By the way, all the links will be attached to this lecture. He has a lot of information about correcting your posture and working out correctly. While I'm at the gym, I'm listening to audiobooks through Audible app. If you can't afford it, there are lots of free audiobooks out there. That's a great way to get out of your design bubble and expand your mind. 5. Foam rolling. It looks as strange as hell, but it gets rid of a lot of kinks in your upper back, butt and thighs. I don't suggest you roll it on your lower back as it might do more harm than good. I've started using it and I like how it's going. Professionals all over are praising foam rolling and I can see why. It's very hard to describe, but it's like having a deep tissue massage. I strongly recommend getting one and keeping it in plain sight so you remind yourself to use it. 6. Avoid yoga and or stretching. I'm actually a fan of yoga. The problem isn't with the exercises, but with the warm-up, which is usually non-existent. From my research, I've found static stretching has a negative impact on your health. So if you get up out of your chair after a four-hour session, load up a yoga program and start doing poses, you're going to have some pains and aches, which are not normal. I've found that stretching is best done after a workout. So ideally you'd warm up your body for about 10 to 15 minutes, do your hour-long workout, be it yoga or whatever else, and then and only then do your stretching. I don't have that time, so I skip it altogether. Is that smart? I don't think so, but whenever I did it without going through a lengthy warm-up, I ended up in pain. Does that mean yoga is bad? Not at all. I did it for a month and I felt wonderful, but in that month I worked the fewest amount of hours. That's because for me it takes a lot of time. I'm sure yoga enthusiasts will disagree, but that's been my experience. 7. Avoid coffee for mental work. While there's a lot of information out there, I found coffee is a great help when it's used before a running session. As for designing and focusing, not so much. Nowadays I do drink it, but mostly when I'm about to work out. I don't tie my projects to a cup of coffee, as I don't think that's helpful, especially considering all the supplements I'm taking. 8. Mechanical keyboard. I use my keyboard a lot, and when I finally upgraded to an expensive mechanical one, I was completely blown away. I can't describe the difference I felt while typing. It's night and day. It's hard to justify the $150 to $200 price with words alone. You have to try one for a few days, and I promise you, you won't ever go back to a regular keyboard. Again, expensive, but during my massage sessions, I could feel how much pain and tension I'd accumulated in my hands and wrists. There's also the question of longevity. It's been several years and I'm still using my first one without any problems. 9. Sleep and wake up early. A no-brainer, but my best experience comes from sleeping at half past 10 and getting up at half past 7. This allows you to recover from your workouts, rest your eyes, but also get a lot of work hours. Sleep in a cool, dark room with a great mattress and pillow. 
They say never cheap out on tyres, sushi and mattresses. I totally agree. I always sleep on my back and I use a firm mattress and a memory pillow. A big investment, but it's money well spent. 10. Always have a 2-litre bottle of water next to you. Have it open at all times and constantly reach out and drink. This will not only hydrate you, but it'll also remind you to get up and go to the toilet every once in a while. OK, that's it for now. I could go on, but I wanted to keep this lecture reasonable in length. Let me finish by stating the obvious. Most of these points cost money and quite a fair amount, that's true. I don't advise you to go out and make all these purchases if you're not winning at least one or two contests per month. But if you're making some money from your designs, these are some of the best ways to invest in yourself and your longevity. Are these extreme? It depends. How bad do you want it? To excel at what I do, I follow this plan and I make it part of my life. I've also read Tools of the Titans by Tim Ferriss where he interviews highly successful people and he asks them how they managed their amazing performances. You might want to check it out, but I have to warn you, those guys really take it to an extreme that even I'm not comfortable with. Regarding all these points, it's your choice and I recommend you carefully experiment and see how things evolve. It's your health, your responsibility. I wanted an edge and this was one of the ways that I could get ahead, but it's not mandatory in any way, shape or form. OK, keep me posted about your own experience and if you'd like to know more about my daily activity, just let me know.